I'm very curious about how you sold people on the ability to say that we're going to have a language in which will break backwards compatibility. Because I mean, to this day, people are still fighting about Python, right? Like, I mean, <laughs> I still hear people upset about the two to three break. And so I can't like, that just seems like much harder of a sell to be like, you know what, we're going to go out there and we're going to break you. Like how, how did you manage to convince anybody that that was a, uh, a good idea? Because well, so the I minus, that, minus, um, and plus, plus, I believe, was your kind of primary example that you gave about breaking Swift. Sure. Yeah, so, um, well, let me let me give you, again, just time frame. Uh, Swift is just 10 years old now from its launch. When it's launched in 2014, I, was, I think it's still 2024. I lose track sometimes. But the uh, <laughs> but Python 2 to 3 took 15 years just for the transition, <laughs> right? If order magnitude, something like that. Right? Yeah. And so... Mm-hmm. So, so not not only did we make a change in Swift, literally moved the entire Objective C community to a completely different language in less time than Python did two to three. Right? <laughs> so, just not not. I mean, maybe I'm hum- humble bragging a little bit here, but the um, uh, but how is that possible? Well, it's because it's a completely different kind of transition. So, in the case of Python two to three the entire Python program had to move all at once. And so all your packages, all your dependencies, everything. And so if you have one um, one little thing that you depend on that can't move or is in, incompatible, then you're stuck, right? In the case mm-hmm. of Objective-C to Swift, there's still a lot of Objective-C and C and C++ and all this other stuff in a modern Swift app. Like a lot of Apple's written a tremendous amount of Swift code for sure, but they still have a lot of Objective-C code in their stack. And so that ability to integrate and migrate and interoperate is so key. And that was, let me tell you, an extremely difficult technical problem, but that really changed the nature of adoption. And so one of the things that allowed Swift to get adopted very quickly is the app developers could take their Objective-C apps that they'd written, you know, sometimes a million lines of code, and then move one class over, right? And so now you have- That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. A whole whole thing in Objective-C, and I'm going to write some new feature in Swift. Right. And so this is where, I mean, we take all these lessons to Mojo and it's the same, same ideas. Right. And so you make it so that you don't have to be monolithically changing everything all at once. You actually work the way the developers work, which is that they want to invest time into things that are cool and shiny and new and important for their business or whatever. Um, not the dusty deck code. That's fine. 